So today we're going to be looking at cheap LED strip, something he likes to call cheap lead tape. And I've got a feeling that's going to fall apart today. So Gordon, talk us through what we're going to look at. Okay, Gary. So I've been on a well-known online retailer and bought some lead tape that came with free next day delivery. Okay, so I've, I've picked it up. There, there is not a lot of resources gone into there from the Earth's crust, is there? That is a very, very light LED strip. So what are you going to prove to us then? Okay, so we're going to look at sometimes what's known as constant voltage lead tape and okay. compare that to some that's known as current regulated lead okay. tape. Okay, and we've got both in front of us here. Yeah, we're going to we're going to look at the at the very economically priced one first. Okay, and then compare how it performs when you start looking at things like input voltage and voltage drop across the tape. Okay, all right, and see how that affects perhaps the light output. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then. So, are we going to power this one up first? Is that the idea? So we're going to power it up. Okay, so that go. is a 12 volt LED strip. It is, yep, okay. it is. And it's, it's what, five meters long? It's five meters long, okay. and the packaging claims that it's 18 watts, but if I look at the power supply, there's the first problem, it's actually 12 watts. Ah, okay. So someone's been telling a few porkies there, or they may have made an improvement in the LED efficiency. Okay, right, okay. So so you're now going for what used to be, um, I think, a container for yeah. chocolate treats. On the lighting industry, you'd call this an integrating sphere. Okay. So we've made our own one there. I'm going to put that over there. I'm going to bring in our lux meter. So this is not... hole in the bottom of it because he kept taking the actual chocolate <laughs> out the top and getting there with his hand in there. So, okay. So we're going to use this to measure the light levels. And we measure it in what HSI unit? Yeah, we're, we're using lux. So okay. this is not scientific. This is just for comparison and what we have to hand here. So it's just to do a comparative measurement. So I'm going to put that on there. Right. And... And we're going to measure the the so we've got roughly 12 volts going down our LED strip. We're doing it at the very starting point of the strip. Yeah. And you're telling me how many lux we've got approximately. So there's about 1,500 there. 1,500 lux. Okay. Yeah. That's all right. Yep. So that's it. Bang on 12 volts on the power supply. So I'm just going to start dialing that back and you'll see. As so soon so as you're going to drop the voltage now. Dropping the voltage. Okay. And you see immediately the light output is dropping down. So yeah. What's the lux level doing? So if I take that to... 11 and a half volts. So just half a volt. Half a volt off. It's now down at 1300-ish. So we've lost 200? Yeah, straight away. Just with half a volt? With half a volt, yeah. My issue there is that actually you're, you're measuring that at the very start of the actual LED strip. Won't the strip naturally drop voltage because of obviously its length and its resistance as it gets towards the end? Yeah, so let's have a look at that. Okay. So, so if I just. I'll you're going to wind that back to 12? Wind that back up to 12 volts. Okay, and we've got about 1300 lux at this stage. So it'll be really interesting to see what lux we get at the end of the tape or, or further down the tape. I don't know if they're going to unravel all five yeah, metres of it. Our... So do you, do you want me to unravel? You unravel, Gary, okay. you do the technical bit. Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm all over it. So. That's a, that's a good couple of metres. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. well, five metres. Do you want it all off? Carry on, go on. Okay, we'll carry do, on we'll do all of it. Okay, so there's not a lot to it, is there? Yeah. Okay, you want to pull that off? You know? So yeah. we've got that there. Move that one out of the way. And we'll bring in, just pick it around. So, from, spot. from my days at college, I would presume that well, there's going to be some volt drop here, and maybe you're going to prove that's going to affect the actual lux output. Okay. Yeah, so there you go. Wow. S around about 700 lux. So. A massive difference. So, so we had 1300 at 12 volts at the start. Yeah. Five meters further down at the very end, we've got seven, seven and a half ish. Yeah. Crazy. And then obviously now, if I factor in a voltage drop again, I'll go back down to that 11 volts. That is. I mean, the well, human eye won't really pick up. So that's now a six, six, 650 ish. Wow. Yeah. So the human eye won't pick it up. However, if you look at actually what's going on in this circuit, and he has a famous sketch I did earlier. <laughs> LS Lousy comes back again. Yes, we've had, we've had this before with your prototype behind us for the, the Luden sightboard. So yeah, you're back in with your, yeah. your cardboard and your felt. So, so just talk again. me through this. So here's our, essentially, if you think of that as your bus bar that runs along the, the LED tape. Yeah. Okay. So that's five meters worth, and that's carrying the whole current for yep. each one, and then every between each cut point, you've got a little series connected chain of LEDs. They're lead emitting diodes. Leads, Gary. Yeah, it's three syllables. Versus oh, are they LEDs? Yeah, light emitting diodes. Oh, I think that's where your leads, your, your lead unravels, doesn't it? Because yeah. they're actually LEDs. Okay, so so we've got a resistor. We've yep. got three LEDs, and then we're connecting it back to our negative. Yeah. 
but as we go down the track, obviously volt drop on the track itself means we're not going to have the same voltage at the end. Yeah, so the resistor will have been set to get the correct current yeah. at 12 volts. Yes. And set, but as soon as your voltage moves from 12 volts, yeah. the current will alter because that resistor is a fixed, it can't do anything about it. It's not okay. active. Okay, fixed value of resistance. Okay, the voltage changed. We know Ohm's law, obviously the current will change. Yeah. Okay. That's, but, that's good. so what happens in our, in our tape here, so obviously the, LEDs at this end of the tape are running at a much higher current because they're sucking all those volts up. Yeah, than the ones at the far end of the of the tape. And we saw that in the lux level drop between the start and finish, and it correlates exactly the same with the voltage yeah. change as well. So over a long period of time, they're running brighter and hotter for longer uh -huh. than the ones at that end. So they're going to dim quicker than the ones at the far end of the. And LED more likely tape. to fail at the front end. And more likely to fail. Wow, there's a lot to consider there, just in a reasonably priced piece of LED strip. Actually, it's the old saying, you probably get what you pay for, don't you? Yeah, so let's next look at what happens on a one that has current regulation in each one of these series chains. Okay. So we've moved aside our reasonably priced LED strip and brought some Osram strip in. Looks identical almost to me. What are you going to try and prove to me now, Gordon? Okay, so we're going to look at it again, look at what those components actually do. Uh, first thing you'll notice though is this tape isn't quite as flexible as our very competitively priced one because I'd suggest more copper actually right. in the circuit board. So we'd expect more copper, less volt drop. Yeah, makes sense. So I'm going to power it up. Okay. Now this is 24 volts. That's not an issue. We're not worried about it being 12 on the first one, 24 on this one. You're going to prove to me at the start of the LED strip what the lux levels are and whether that lux level continues throughout the strip. That's really what we're trying to prove, yes? Yeah. Okay. And this is a lot higher power tape. So this, this entire strip is 67 watts compared with our yeah, 18. 18 that's actually 12 <laughs> okay. in the last one. So I'll bring in our homemade. But that wasn't the issue. We just want to see. Is that the way? Um, so there you'll see we've got around about 7,000 yeah so, yeah, so 7,000 looks at the very start, that's yeah. okay, and at 24 volts, you can drop the voltage. So I'll just wind that down, so okay. you can see it's not really moving. No, so you've lost now about half a volt, and that hasn't moved really at all. Yeah. yeah around about half a volt, but remember we're starting at 24, so you're coming down now, yeah, closer to 23. Again, that's, that's yeah, 7,000. Yeah. Well, wow, that's hardly moving at all. Yeah, so if you imagine that on that first example, that moved straight away. And, and that, that bodes well to me thinking now when that goes back to 24 and you've dropped the voltage, so obviously we've kept the lux level kept the same, I'm, I'm presuming the further down the LED strip I am, that natural volt drop are not going to really affect the actual output either. Yeah, well let's have a look at the end of the strip. So okay. if you unravel it again. Okay, so again. Uh, you shouldn't really run the LED strip on a, uh, no, it's a, little on, a on a table, probably getting quite warm because there's quite a bit of power in this strip. There is. Okay, you want it all off? You're going to go to yeah. the end? Okay. So it's whether it can remain at about just over 7,000, is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Okay. So I'll bring in our back up to 24 volts. So back at 24 volts. This is getting quite hot it because is. it's Living quite warm. Up. And then bring in there, and you'll see, yeah, we're at 7,000. It looks a little higher. It is, yeah, it is actually higher at that end. Um, so again, I'll dial back the voltage. So that was, that's that's yeah, that's slightly higher than we had at the start. And you bring the voltage down. That's not moving. Yeah. So how is that possible? So what we've got going on on this one, so cool. I'll bring in uh, LS Lousy I'll, number two. I'll just switch that off a bit because it's getting quite warm. Yeah. Yes, LS Lousy number two. We've got in this time six LEDs in series uh, and there's some componentry on there that's got more than two, two legs on it. Okay, so yeah. what we've got here is a linear current regulator and that senses the current flowing through that um, series chain of LEDs yes. and adjusts itself to make sure that current stays constant. Ah, so as the voltage could change, this alters itself, so almost like a, a variable resistor, is that sort of thing? It does it itself? Yes. And then therefore keeping the current constant throughout those six LEDs? Yeah. Therefore, we expect them to have the same lux level when we measure it. Yeah, so let's just prove it by looking at the, the voltage. Okay, so that, that's so good. So you, you're going to, yeah, and then should, can we go back and do the reasonable price voltage we'll as well? check the reasonably priced one. Okay, so you're banking on... That's 24 volts, volts anyway, because we're right next to the power supply. It's 23 actually, Gordon. Well, so I'll we'll dial it back up just yeah, for... Get back to 24. So up we go to 24. 
So I expect it to be 24 at the end. Yeah, it's bang on 24. So yeah. a bit of calibration, etc. So you're going to measure at the very start. And the I'll measure voltage. it right at oh, the end. Oh, the end. No, well, that's going to be 24. Okay. So, so you're brave straight in at the end. So what straight do you... in at the end, and I'll power it up before I'll put the probes on before I blind myself. Okay. And okay. there, at the end of this strip here, we're getting 22 and a half ish volts. Okay. So, so there is a volt drop along the strip, which we expect. But as we proved, the output of the LEDs hasn't fallen off because it's got constant current. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's good. So again, probably getting what you pay for. Getting what you pay for. So right. let's go back to our competitively priced. I've got a feeling we might run out of volts when we get to the end. <laughs> okay, so let's move that to one side. And our competitively priced one is just here. So let's, uh, do you need it fully unraveling? Yeah, that's getting okay. right to the end. Okay, you so you just... attach the ends then. So we've gone back to 12 volts, and we've got to see how many of those volts can get to the end of this very flimsy LED strip. Very flexible, Gary. Yeah, flexible, sorry. Great very for flexible. Objects. Okay, yeah, let's just pull that off. Okay. So I've set the 12 there, and you can see what we get now, that is, yeah. Might help if I connect it the right way around. flexible, is that the word you use? Flexible? Yeah. Incredibly flexible. Okay, so. Okay, so it should be a nice easy one to measure. So 12 volts at one end, and at this end we've got, right, you can turn her on, see what we get. Yeah, so here, about nine and a half volts. Right, <laughs> okay. Now, we've lost a few on the way. Yeah, and that's obviously a significantly lower power as well. Yeah. Which is why it's so flexible. <laughs> There's not much copper there. So, so let's summarize what we've proved there then. So again, you get what you pay for. Yeah. Okay, but it, actually the output from the, what did you call the one on the Osram? It was a constant. Current regulator. Current regulator meant that we got more uniform light throughout the LED strip. Yeah, uniform for the entire length. And this one, even though you reckon probably the eye isn't seeing it, we're getting a considerably different lux level at, at each end. Yeah, so you won't see it on day one, <laughs> but on day 101, 301, yeah. you will start to notice it. And obviously it depends on the application. Interesting point to note is the packaging on this one claims a life of 15,000 hours. Wait, that, that's not a lot. No, but again, it depends on the application. If it's in a, a wardrobe or a cupboard or something, and you've got it on a switch to open every now and again, yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna notice it if you're running it in a corner in a room that's yeah. in use all day yeah. it's a shop or a you know, a living room then yeah that that life can be actually quite short and then you, you're back you're tearing it out you're replacing it you've got all that hassle yeah okay as always eFix would love to hear your comments on installations you've done on led strips something he still wants to call lead tape even though i think we called them leds today that makes a lot of sense. whatever no they're not leads so as always please leave those comments below and as always we're looking for your outstanding led strip installations and feel free to send them over to efix.co.uk where hopefully we'll get to post them on our website for you as well